While the baby champ is on the workbench, I thought I'd put the scope on the workbench and use it and do some signal tracing through the radio, starting with the 1A7, which is the uh, converter, or sometimes it's known as the mixer. It's also an amplifier. It's the first tube in this set. Uh, next to the antenna. I have located all the plates of all the tubes and it was pretty easy. They're all number three pin. And this is where we're going to start looking at the signal using my oscilloscope. What you're looking at here is caused by the mixing of the oscillator that is incorporated in the 1A7 and also uh, the radio frequency from the station and they're all being mixed together at this point. The in unevenness up there is not modulation. It's uh, due to uh, the mixing effect of two frequencies. Here I have changed the frequency of the scope so we can take a look at the audio frequency that is on this carrier. You can see that there's not much movement, but this is the first tube, so it's not amplified very much. I'm now moving the lead to the plate of the 1N5. And at this point, there's a, a lot more signal, so I'm going to have to turn down the scope. But we're going to do the same thing here, change between RF frequency and audio frequency so you can see both at this point. The carrier here is 455 KC, the intermediate frequency. As you can see, it's a nice modulated carrier. Here I am moving the scope lead to pin 5 of the 1H5, which is the diode part of the tube. If you look closely, you'll see that it's actually only being modulated on the negative half or the bottom. I have now moved the lead to the plate of the 1H5 and there's nothing here but audio. I'll change the scope to RF and you'll see that there's no RF at this point. It is strictly an audio signal.
Now I've changed the input of the scope to the plate of the 1T5, which has even a higher output, and I can control the volume at that point with the volume control. And of course there is no RF here. I think seeing the signals using a scope will be beneficial to you when you want to use a signal tracer. I think you'll be able to identify now when to use RF and when to use audio. And when I'm in doubt, I still try both. But uh, pretty much it's easy to determine where the RF signals are and where the audio signals are.